Hey guys, EBP Man here. Uh, today we're doing a comparison of the Here One IQ Buds and the Braggy Dash Pro. Received a lot of questions about the products. Um, while in some cases they're in the same category or class of earbuds, in other cases they may not be. So let's go ahead and review all three, and hopefully this is going to help you with your uh, buying selection, uh, given the fact that these are similarly priced. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now we're going to cover several things um, in this video. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, the actual battery. So we're going to talk about um, audio quality. We're going to talk about overall sound experience. Um, and, and that's going to be a little bit different from audio quality because these earbuds actually have special um, audio features that we're going to talk about. And we're also going to talk about fit. So how do they fit? Uh, phone quality, so if you're taking phone calls, what can you experience? Uh, we're also going to talk about speech um, enhancement or amplification um, as um, these earbuds do that. We're also going to look at the apps and compare the apps and uh, talk about Bluetooth connectivity because that's really important. Do you drop signal with these? Uh, we're going to talk about water resistance uh, or sweat resistance and you know what we see there. And then if there's any kind of fitness attributes with these specific earbuds. So a lot to cover and we're going to talk about and compare all three. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about battery life. So what you're looking at starting with the Hear One is a two hour uh, battery life when it comes to streaming music and using them. So you get two hours, you'll be able to recharge the battery uh, on these earbuds and it takes an hour. Uh, the earbuds themselves have a 60 uh, milliamp hour uh, battery on each earbud itself. And uh, your battery case that you see right here is a uh, 560 uh, milliamp hour battery. So this is going to give you at least three charges. Now, um, out of the three that we see here, um, I would say that both the Here One and the Braggy Dash have the best discharge rate. And that means that as you have your earbuds resting in the case, how quickly does the battery itself deplete? Um, this one does a really nice job. Um, you can he have them in the case for several days and not really see uh, the battery discharge uh, significantly. So um, again, that's what you can expect uh, from this. So two hour battery life, one hour to recharge, and again, up to three charges coming out of this case. Now, when we look at the IQ Buds, you're going to get four hours, four hours of use time. And the IQ Buds are a little bit different because they look at time in two manners. One is streaming time. So you could use this to stream music uh, and to, uh, and then also for hearing, um, I would say, augmentation or amplification. Um, even though Hear One does amplification, there isn't anything documented as to what the amplification time is versus the streaming time. And in my experience, I really haven't found anything significant where I can say that, wow, it lasts an hour longer. Um, so we're just going to keep to the fact that uh, IQ Buds does highlight that. So you get four hours of streaming that's listening to YouTube, that's listening to music, that's whatever kind of streaming you're doing. Now, you do get to charge uh, multiple times, and this is a pretty uh, decent size um, battery uh, solution. You can see because the case is larger, this is a 1,140 milliamp hour battery. So you're almost twice the size as this one, and what you get is if you just use this for speech amplification, you can get up to eight hours of use. So that's almost a full day of using it. And the neat thing about it is that if you put it in the actual charging base, like we have right here, uh, this one right here, what will happen is you can actually get up to uh, 16 hours of, of, you know, of battery life if you're just doing the streaming. But if you're doing the speech amplification, then you can push that all the way up to 32 hours. So let me make sure you understand that. So you could be listening to music and get four hours. But if you're using this to help or assist with hearing in certain environments, you'll get eight hours. And then the uh, actually battery life just is you know exponential when it comes from that. You do have each one of these earbuds has a 100 milliamp hour battery. So it's a little bit larger than this. This was 60 and this is 100. Uh, so that's the battery life there. Now let's go ahead and talk about um, the Dash. The Dash has the longest life of the three. This is going to be five hours of streaming. Um, has uh, 100 milliamp hour batteries in each one of your earbuds. So the earbuds that I'll just pop out like this so you can see them if you haven't seen the other videos. So they come out slowly like this. So 100 in each. And the battery, 2,000 
milliamp hours. It's well above that. It's like I think 200, 200, 2,200. So nice extra battery, largest capacity of the three, uh, and it's going to give you multiple charges. Now, while this the IQ Buds has a uh, specific feature that allows you to, within 15 minutes, charge these earbuds uh, for more than an hour. And this is the only one of the three that has it. There's nothing documented on the Braggy that allows you to, or that specifies that. So it um, takes under, under two hours to get a full charge under an hour, you know, an hour to get a full charge on this one. And then this one, while it does take a significant amount of time because the batteries are larger, right? You do get, if you do almost like a quick charge, you can get it within 15 minutes. You can get a little bit over an hour to an hour and a half of usage out of this one. So battery life, uh, two, again, four, five, largest battery capacity, next largest battery capacity, and smallest battery capacity. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about, and this is still on the battery side, is uh, battery indicators. Uh, this unit here uh, only gives you notification on your phone, and it shows you a battery bar, but there's no percentage. The Braggy gives you a um, the Braggy is in the same. Uh, class or category it's color based there is no percentage which I wish it did uh, here the here one um, or actually the IQ buds are the only ones that give you the ability to see a battery percentage so you'll see 20 percent 30 percent on the actual app unfortunately you're not getting uh, from any of these like some of the other uh, earbuds that you may have reviewed or seen uh, where it tells you two hours of battery life or three hours of battery life you don't get those kind of prompts they just give you low battery messaging but nothing that tells you you know how much usage you should expect so uh, really this is the only one that's going to give you any kind of percentage bar on your phone now let's talk about audio and we're going to be looking at um, audio enhancements that include also this uh, the ability to enhance uh, speech and things like that so first of all uh, focusing on audio both of these here have the ability to turn down uh, the world per se uh, they have the ability to muffle if not um, have noise canceling to eliminate so that you don't hear anything else and they do that via their app so both of these do this uh, this one though um, doesn't do that. It doesn't have the ability to adjust it so that you can block out outside of passive noise cancellation and the earbuds, um, you know, the actual covers themselves that help you do that. So now th th there is a difference though. Even though these two have the ability to turn these things down, this is the only one that has the ability to store music. So you can have four gig of music stored, which is a little bit over a thousand, maybe a thousand songs on the earbud. Um, and that's where these defer. Right, because um, these are about noise um, isolation, cancellation, and then enhancement, and this one is more about um, audio uh, fitness. Um, but it does have certain features that we're going to talk about in a second. So uh, again, big difference between these two and this one. This one has the ability to noise cancel, gives you uh, smart filters as well, and this one doesn't. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the actual fit. Um, and I'll uh, see if I can model these for you so you can see how this works. But these are um, nice, they're light, uh, they go in your ear. But what I find is that the overall design, for whatever reason, it does not stay in my ear. Uh, and, and, that's, and that's a problem. Uh, I, I don't trust these for running uh, because I fear that they're going to fall out. And they've actually have already fallen out of my ears a couple times, just doing even cutting the grass or just uh, walking around. Uh, so the uh, they're lightweight. All of them are lightweight. I just find for my ears particularly, these don't really do well. Uh, the IQ buds uh, do uh, are better for me. Uh, and let's look at these for a second. Open it up, and you can see your little fuel gauge here. Uh, here you're looking at these um, have a different design. Uh, they still go inside of your ear. Uh, they seem a little bit larger than the here ones, but I find personally that these do much better in my ear from a fit. Now let's look at the last one, which is going to be the uh, dash. I'll pop these out. And the dash um, are what I would consider my best fitting earbuds. So I'm going to take this one out so you can take a look at it. 
and this one it's just th this shape right here I think is is really what's uh, what's doing it for me uh, so it this goes in pretty deep in the ear canal and I'll compare them in a second um, and this one does in my mind the best for me fits the best doesn't fall out um, I've gone on run with them and then this one does have a heart rate monitor so you can see right here that it has some contacts so this is a, this is a fitness uh, focus type earbud and you can see that right here if I compare that to these, let's put this aside for a second so you can see the overall look. You'll notice that this one um, has kind of a different design and you see this little curvature here, right here. It kind of locks into your ear a lot better. So, th and this one doesn't have, it has it slightly, but it's not that pronounced. Uh, when we take a look at the here ones, you notice that it also goes into your ear canal, but I think because it doesn't have that little tilt that this one has you know this one just kind of goes that way you notice how this one has a different shape to it um, this one tends to fit a little bit better so you can see what the difference is there again this one has these contact points and this one does as well but they don't have any fitness type uh, heart rate monitors this is purely just for charging um, and updating as you um, use them now we did talk about the cases and we spoke about the battery capacities. Uh, the I just wanted to just share something about them. So uh, you have the ability to charge in each one of these. Uh, this one does have a reset button here that's used for programming. So when you put in your your um, micro USB cable, you um, this has functionality where you can press and hold to do soft uh, resets. Uh, it does not have any visual indicators outside of the color area here that tells you what the status is of charging. And then the uh, internal gauge, you have a fuel gauge here, which is nice. Uh, here, you do have a button that you can press to see what your status is. Uh, if you open it up, you can see what your charging levels are and which ones are charging. Uh, the one thing about both of these earbuds that sometimes uh, just bothers me because sometimes they may not sit well is that when you place them in place um, there's no feedback and the same thing with these guys you just put them in place and you, and you want to make sure you have them in place and you close it uh, the feedback that you get is seeing this little light but the difference with the braggy is that the braggy have a magnetic base so when you put them in they just lock into place so you don't have to worry about did I get it right when you just uh, put them in there they just like snap in and I really like that because uh, by snapping in, I know that that is going to be charging and they don't fall out either. So uh, nice design here. Uh, the last thing about from a, a durability perspective, uh, they all seem to be very durable and I would say they're they're very pocketable. Uh, this one tends to be a little bit taller uh, if you're going to put it in a pocket or in a suit uh, or in a purse. Uh, this one though, they have it's, they have a metal case. Um, they have no fuel gauges outside of the out of the this little LED here, and then the color breathing that you see taking place with the earbuds. So that's a little disappointing um, because it's a the most durable case that I found, being that it's uh, made out of metal. Uh, but it really doesn't tell you anything outside of the breathing that's taking place here. So you need to know the colors and you need to know what's going on. Now let's talk about audio. Um, how well do they sound? Bass, mids, and highs. Uh, again, these two ninety nine, three uh, twenty nine, uh, two ninety nine, and then three twenty nine. So these are not your normal earbuds, and given the price point, you would expect them to sound really good, and they do. Uh, but what the exception I would say is with the IQ buds, I find that the IQ buds have a more fuller sound. So when I put it on my ear and I'm listening to music, it may be because of the fit but it just feels fuller. You know, when you think about bass, mids, and highs, all of them do well. So you get nice bass, mids, and highs. You're not going to be thumping in your ear, right? Like if you were wearing some Beats or having some over-the-ear headphones, because that's not what these are designed to do. But you do get high-quality sound in the bass, mids, and highs. It's just that I find that the Nuhira uh, IQ Buds are more full. So, um, and if you... Once you try them, if you, if you go to a big box retailer, you'll be able to experience that. Uh, so uh, that's my only comment when it comes to audio from a bass, mids, and highs. Now let's talk about fit. So from a fit perspective, we talked, we showed um, how the earbuds um, look um, and how they fit, uh, kind of how they're designed. And I would say that uh, I would start from this side as these are the best fitting. These are the next best fitting, and then these are the least best fitting for me and for my ear. I'm literally speaking about the fact that which ones stay in my ear and don't come out, 
at all, which ones rarely come off, and which ones fall out too often. Uh, so that's my uh, order of priority. They all come with tips that you can adjust your fit for your ear. Uh, they all come with multiple um, sizes. And I would say experiment with them and don't fall into the trap that thinking that each earbud would use the same uh, ear tip because our ears are different. So it's not you know, a problem if you go with a medium on one side and a small on the other or a medium and a large. Just make sure that you try and go with the right fit for you. Now, each of these, um, focusing back on the earbuds, have controls. So they have all tap controls. Uh, this one has tap controls as well. And the tap controls take place on this area here. And by the way, as you open each one of these cases, um, the earbuds you know, come to life. And then you remove them. And as soon as they are in your ear, they have been connected. The braggy uh, don't work that way. Uh, what ends up happening is you can um, slide them out like I'm doing here and nothing really happens until the point that you have them in your ear and you have to have the right one in first in order for it to or not first you have to have that one in before the left one comes to life uh, but it also has the control so you do have swipe gestures forward back and the interesting thing with the braggy is that the menuing in comparison of all three Braggy has the most menu options. And their menus are not just swipe, but you can gesture this, and the gesture would be your head. So literally nodding up and nodding down, up and down, you can um, commit to an action. You can turn your head left and right and do something else. So it's pretty interesting that you can use your, your, the motion of your head to control the menu. And that's something that none of the other two have. Now let's talk about speech amplification. And uh, these two units do a real nice job of it and they have um, these things that are called smart filters. So here one has these smart filters for every situation. If you're on a plane, if you're on a train, if you're in a restaurant, and these filters are going to combat the noise, uh, but also uh, enhance your communication. So they have actually two uh, filters, uh, specifically one that focuses on speaking to someone who's in front of you and speaking to and listening to someone who's behind you. So you can listen to someone in front or listen to someone behind you. And I would say of the two, and even though Braggy has some features that are similar, of the two here, uh, here one has the most refined software, and I would say probably the best algorithm that I've seen so far when it comes to directional um, listening. So I can, let's say, I don't have to think about it, I just have to tap, I want to listen to the person in front of me, and then I have a little dial where I can increase and decrease, and that's it. Very simple, hats off to them for that. IQ Buds though has an enormous amount of configurability. Uh, they can actually configure hearing in each ear. You can't in this area, at least in my experience, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so we all don't hear the same from each ear, so being able to adjust it and tweak it is really is really nice. However, the pinpointing of someone in front of you or the pinpointing of someone behind you it doesn't really work that way. It does require some more configuration, and I wish it was as simple as this one, and I wish they had more smart filters. What they have is location filters, and these location filters are for office settings, restaurant settings, uh, airplane settings, uh, so there's an opportunity being missed here. Uh, Braggy, the only thing that they have in this area is a, the ability to have audio transparency, which these two um, have. Audio transparency allows you to listen to music, and at the same time, listen to what's going on around you. As a runner, I want to know my surrounding. I want to hear if a car's beeping at me. I want to hear if someone says, hey, watch out. Um, I want to also, if I'm in an office setting listening to music, I don't want to be so removed from the environment that I don't hear someone asking me to do something. So you can turn on this transparency where you can hear what's going on at the same time you can actually listen to your music. Now, uh, Reggie does a really nice job and I had mentioned in one of my videos that I had these on and they were so comfortable that as I had them on, I was actually, I went to see a Transformers movie. And I was not in the Dolby Theater. I was in a normal theater. And the music and everything, was action was so loud and, you know, just warm and filling. Uh, and I realized that I had the earbuds on and I had audio transparency on as well. So I turned that off and removed them and I could actually tell a significant difference. So they do a decent job when it comes to audio transparency, but they don't have speech enhancement. I can hear people more clearly when I have the transparency on than I would even with my normal earbuds because it's it's focused on that. But again, these two are the ones that are really focused in that area. Now let's talk about Bluetooth capabilities. Um, and, and that's what a big crux. So we'll start out with the here ones. Here ones have a have a problem where back pocket, front pocket, you know, um, 
it it just cuts in and cuts out. You you know even if you're going for a run with these, um, you know you you have an armband so that helps. But if I put it in my pocket, forget about it. Have problems. Uh, the IQ buds um, not so much, but still have the same difficulty uh, when it comes to uh, Bluetooth signal strength. So I'm disappointed because these are. Uh, high-end earbuds and the Bluetooth signal should be much stronger. Uh, the Dash, Braggy, this is their third or fourth generation, so they had problems with the original Dash where everybody was complaining about Bluetooth. They solved it for this version. Have no issues with it. Can even leave my phone and walk away 15, 20 feet and still have a Bluetooth signal. That's not the case with these. So these are really designed to be on your person, close by, um, in proximity of the earbuds and within, you know, I would say inches. Uh, versus feet. So that's the difference also between Bluetooth connectivity. Now let's talk about phone quality, taking phone calls. Um, and I think that this is a good order because I'd say this is the best, this is the second best, and this is the least best when it comes to taking phone calls. All of them have mics, all of them have some type of technology, um, even bone conduction technology, some, some, you know, something like that that's coming out of this one, that helps with the phone calls and being able to um, communicate clearly with someone on the phone. My issue is that um, I've, in my experience, as I'm wearing these in an airport, um, in an area where you know, I frequent, uh, people complain too often. Um, Nuhira has a setting where if you choose it to the music setting, it, it tends to, as a, as a place, um, it tends to do better when it comes to uh, conference calls. But I wish I didn't have to do that. I don't remember to do that. And it's not really clear that you need to do that. So from an audio perspective, taking phone calls, these two are not that good. This is ahead of it. But when I say it's ahead of it, it's not far ahead of it. It's not light years ahead of it. It's just better. Uh, you know, good enough where I would say that this is your better one for uh, business calls or any kind of calls because of how clear the call quality is for the person who is listening to you speak, right? Because I want to make sure about that. Uh, these do well listening to someone calling you. It's the ambient noise that they pick up um, that this one does a better job with. Now, let's talk about sweat and water resistance. Both of these units have sweat resistance, so you can use them for running, you can use them for working out, no problem at all. Uh, you basically have one level higher though with the Braggy. The Braggy also yeah, are um, water resistant to the point that you can use them for swimming. And they actually have a dedicated earbud for our earbud sleeve that's in that comes with that allows you to wear these uh, and swim securely without them coming out of your ear. So this one also allows you just to go into one meter of water um, and swim with them. Uh, and it has a fitness app that we're going to talk about when we talk about apps that these two don't. But this is um, definitely water resistant. Uh, these two are not. They're sprinkle and sweat resistant, but not designed for any kind of swimming. All right, so this is what the Hue one looks like. So I'm going to take the earbud. Uh, Place it in my ear, and then I'm going to twist to lock it into place. You can see how much of the earbud sticks out. Right? I'll turn this way so you can see how much of it you can see from the back. And I'll look forward so you can see how much you see from the front. Now these are the here, uh, new Hira uh, IQ Buds. So here's the bud. I'll put it in my ear. I'm going to twist the same way as we did with the previous ones. This is what it looks like from this side. Here's how much sticks out from the back. And then this is what it looks like from the front, from a side view. Now these are the braggy. So here's the earbud. I'm gonna put it in my ear and twist in. This is what it looks like from the side. This is what it looks like from the back. And this is what it looks like from the front. All right, so let's talk about apps. Of the three, I find that for the speech amplification um, uh, category, I find that the Here One has the most refined, easy to use app. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to go into noise filter so you can see what I mean. Very simple to use, um, has kind of a uh, material design type look to it, and all you do is literally choose what you want. Um, if you want to listen to people that are behind you, you tap that and you're done. If you want to listen to people in front of you, you tap that and you're done. Um, you're on an airplane and you want to reduce the jet engine noise, you do that and you're done. Uh, any of these scenarios, uh, what you can do then is go in, go out of here, and then what you can do is increase or reduce this. 
by doing this, I hear more of what's going on around me. So you notice that it says plus six, so I hear more. Um, and then as I bring this number up, what will end up happening is um, I hear less, so it drowns the sound away. So right now what I'm doing is reducing all the noise around me, uh, and what I'm actually hearing my own voice as I'm speaking because I have the earbuds in, uh, and that works better now. You'll notice how this is connecting and reconnecting. This is kind of the Bluetooth challenge that I mentioned uh, I have a lot with the here ones. And so the app uh, is very easy to use, has some nice controls, uh, but you have some stability issues with the Bluetooth signal. You do have a filter here that allows the earbuds to sample what's going on in the environment and then recommend a filter setting for you that uh, you can call it almost like custom. So that's a, a really nice feature as well uh, when obviously they're connected. Uh, the next thing that you have is um, when the earbuds are connected, if you do lose the connection, you do lose your filters and the ability to do um, any of the things that are going on. Now these earbuds as part of the app, and we didn't talk about this in audio, do have the ability to enhance your um, music experience. So let's say you're at a club or let's say you're at a concert with the live mix feature that you saw up here. I'm just going to bring this in, that live mix. You can actually highlight bass, treble, you know, the type of music that you want to listen to um, as opposed to the um, you know how you're hearing it now so if you're someone who likes more bass you can adjust that for bass if you are someone who likes more mids or highs you can do the same so uh, easy to use app very simple uh, and has some, some really cool features so let's move on to the next one now the IQ Buds has uh, one of the more stable apps that I found on the market. Also what I find is that amongst these three, uh, these two have consistent experiences both on iOS and on Android. Uh, here one occasionally will have features available on iOS um, and not available on Android. And there's just one feature that I've noticed um, that is on the dash that also is only available on iOS at this time. Uh, but for the most part, I would say 100% of the features that I've seen on iOS are available on Android for IQ uh, Buds. I really appreciate that because, you know, as uh, a consumer, I don't want to have uh, a different experience or someone else have a different experience based on the handset that they use, that they chose. I like having that consistency. Now here, what you have is, again, the ability to, to choose a location and heart that location. And as you're harding the location, you have the ability to, you're using the earbud by, you know, just touching and swiping, you'll be able to access these so you don't really need your phone to do it. But again, here you have your battery life meter. Uh, and then what you have here is the ability to do that similar adjustment. And as I move it this way, I hear less of what's going on around me. And as I bring this up, I actually get to hear more. Uh, and you have all these different settings and, you know, they're going to they're, they're gonna be enhancing um, the way you hear what's around you. Uh, and what's playing in your ear differently. You do have the ability to have a live equalizer, as we mentioned, and you also have the ability to sync, and this is really more about fine-tuning. Um, and that's great. I really like that. But once again, I would prefer to have these, um, not have to do that for it to be more intelligent and for it to um, do that uh, sampling and come out with a better experience for me. Now, again, one of the things that sets this one aside is the fact that it has the ability to uh, tune individual ears. So you can tune for your left and you can tune for your right, which you can't do with the here ones, nor can you do that with Braggy. Now this is the um, the Dash software, uh, and it's interesting because what they have here um, is pretty a pretty intuitive design, but you still see that there is some issues with the app because it's cutting off the word connected. Um, first. By just tapping your earpiece, you can actually see what kind of controls you have. So these are all the tap controls, and every earpiece has different things that it can do. It also has, from an audio transparency, uh, two modes. One that is uh, standard and one that is, has a windshield. So if you do not enable the windshield or you're in an environment where there's a lot of noise because of the wind blowing and the mics are picking it up, it, you get like this scratchy noise taking place. Well, you can turn on... Um, windshield and then that goes away. Now neither of these two solutions have that so what you'd have to do is if you're out in a windy scenario you have to dial 
down the world, right? You dial down how the sensitivity of what's picking up around you in order for that to go away. So that scratchiness will be there until you change the volume of them, the sensitivity of the mics. Uh, so uh, the other thing that you have, and this is uh, really different because the Braggy, uh, in addition to playing music is also an activity tracker. So it is going to track your heart rate, it's going to track um, your running, uh, cycling, swimming, and you can review that and your heart rate as it relates to those channels based on the contact points on the earbuds. It does also have um, you know uh, several controls so you can have head gestures you can use touch controls you can there's uh, some sneak peek functions where you can tap your cheek and then something happens so if I tap my cheek um, Siri or Google now take off um, you have body movement so this is the one that I was mentioning where you know it will do auto tracking because uh, again this is more of a fitness uh, type uh, head uh, earbud uh, and then you also have uh, something for you know different routines that you want to set up so uh, pretty pretty cool and this is the hair head gestures that I was showing earlier now the last area I just wanted to show you is the volume so you can control the master volume um, from the app and then also you can turn on that uh, windscreen on and off and do all those kind of cool uh, settings so pretty robust app but a little bit different because it's focused on fitness so this concludes my review of the here one IQ buds and braggy dash comparison I hope this helps with your buying decision if you're looking at these three high-end earbuds. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.